esteemed colleagues and friends from all over the world. Welcome to the first live plenary event of the 71st International Astronautical Congress, the Cyberspace Edition. Despite the new format of this year's Congress, we wanted to keep some of the most iconic IAC traditions and we kick off these three days with one of the highlights of the IEC plenary program, the Heads of Agencies Plenary. In our capacities as IEF Honorary Ambassador and as the IEF President, respectively, Jean-Yves Legal and myself will be moderating today's plenary live from the IEF office here in Paris. All other speakers will be connected live from their homes and offices all around the world. This year, in these challenging times, it will be specifically interesting to hear from the leaders of the space community and to feel that despite the physical distance, the space community still gathers around common goals. For quite some time now, we have realized that space endeavors, especially those focusing on space exploration, are more successful when conducted as a collective and international effort. And I'm looking forward to hear what exciting plans and projects our eminent speakers will share with us today. Before diving into the discussion, let me share with you some logistics. Towards the end of the session, we will be collecting questions from the audience through the IF app. So please download the app and follow the instructions on the screen to register for the panel and ask your questions. Let me now hand over to Jean-Yves. Hello, the world, and uh, thank you, Pascal, for uh, the introduction. Without uh, further ado, I would like to introduce you today's uh, distinguished speakers. So I will start with uh, Jim Brindenstein, Administrator of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. Dmitry Rogozin, uh, Director General of Roscosmos State Space Corporation. Hiroshi Yamakawa, President of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA. Lisa Campbell, President of the Canadian Space Agency, CSA. Kay Sivan, Chairman of the Indian Space Research Organization. Jan Werner, Director General of the European Space Agency, ISA. And uh, Kejian Zhang, Administrator of the China National Space Administration, CNSA. Now, I would like to dive right into the first round of questions. Jim, I will start with you. Could you tell us what is the importance of international collaboration to NASA as it embarks on the Artemis program? Uh, absolutely, Jean-Yves. And I just want to say thank you um, to, to everybody for uh, going forward with the International Astronautical Congress in these very challenging times. Um, I, I like what Pascal said. This is a space community, and we all know that we can all do more when we work together. And this is the, the best forum for all of us to get together and talk about what our agendas are and how to achieve them together um, so that we can all do more than ever before. So I, I'm very excited about this week, um, and I look forward to some really amazing dialogues. Uh, you know, our, our friend Jean Eve, uh, you, you, you've done a great job, and, and I know. You know, Jan Werner has said so many times in the past that, you know, competition is a driver, but collaboration is an enabler. And when we think about cooperation in space and how important it is to the future of space exploration, I would say it's more important now than, than ever before. And I think that's perfectly exemplified in the International Space Station, where we've had 15 countries operating the ISS now uh, for 20 years with humans on board. We think about the contributions of, you know, the European Space Agency with the Columbus module and so many more things, and, and the, the Roscosmos, the Russian Space Agency, with the, the ability to launch astronauts and, and cargo to the International Space Station and the Russian segment. We, we think about, um, you know, the Canada arm and, and what Canada has provided 
in terms of robotics, not only on the space shuttle, but now the International Space Station, and eventually the gateway for sustainable access to the moon with reusable human landers. And of course, the Japanese Space Agency with the Kibo module and all of the capabilities that go along with that. We can all do so much more when we work together. The International Space Station, I think, is a perfect example of that. And the, the good thing is now, when we go to the moon under the Artemis program and onto Mars, we can build on that framework and we can have more collaboration than ever before with new space agencies and space agencies that are wanting to go to the moon um, and, and, of course, onto Mars. So I think there's a lot of room for growth and opportunity. Um, and we're very excited about um, so many countries coming to the table and saying, hey, we want to go to the moon with you. Uh, under the Artemis program. So we're just really excited about all of the collaboration uh, that we see within the space community today. Thank you, Jim, uh, for your answer. And the next question goes to Dimitri. Can you please tell us about um, Russia's plan for future space exploration beyond the ISS? Will you join a cooperation with NASA or other partners, or will you rather rely on a purely national program? Geneva and Pascal, I'm delighted to see you. We are maintaining business and friendly relations with Jim Brandenstein, other heads of space is from our partnership our partnership countries. As regards the National Space Station, we and our partners are discussing an option to extend its lifetime to 2028 or even 2030. There are different ways and scenarios to develop the ISS project. Ready to consider any proposal from our partners and make it together. Roscosmos is determined to maintain accommodation of Russian cosmonauts at the low Earth orbit, no matter which decision is finally taken regarding the ISS. In April 2021, Russia plans the Nauka, or Science, multi-purpose laboratory module to the ISS, a move that will dramatically expand capability of the Russian segment and progress in terms of running scientific experiments in areas like biotech, microelectronics, optical electronics, lasers, and other applications. ERA manipulator that is installed at the Nauka module is designed to capture objects outside the spacecraft and then with high precision. Six months after the multi laboratory module is launched, a multi-docking hub will be integrated into the Russian segment of the ISS. It has five points for docking spacecraft or others. The International Space Station is a truly international project and decisions within its framework should not be Taken this is a good opportunity to mention the Lunar Gateway project. Our American partners are actively promoting it, and in our view, Lunar Gateway in its current form is too US centric, so to speak. Russia is likely to refrain from participating in it on a large scale. This being said, we are interested in making sure that the design of the docking module will enable uh, the Orel spacecraft to dock to the Lunar Gateway. We are working on a prospective space transportation system, Orel spacecraft. It is designed for future national manned missions and should need arise, also be used benefit of our partners as a, as a backup option to launch astronauts into space or bring them back from the orbit. In the light of this purpose, creation of standards and standardization of interface manned spacecraft becomes a truly important matter. 
and the same relates to extension research data obtained during the operation of the Moon. Roscosmos will continue working with its international partners in all these areas. And I would like to mention especially open and friendly relations with China and China National Space Administration and its head, Mr. John Keitsan. And we believe that there is more to come in these relations. Tomorrow I'm flying to Baikonur, because on Wednesday morning we have, um, uh, we have scheduled the launch of a manned mission. Uh, the crew would include Sergei Ryzhikov, Sergei Kudzverchkov, and Kathleen Rubens, a NASA astronaut. So we Regardless of the pandemic outbreak, we are moving on with implementing our plans. And uh, I would like uh, now to address the next question to Hiroshi. Uh, what is the motivation of Japan and JAXA of the International Space Station and space exploration? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Janib and Pascal. It's a great pleasure and honor to be part of this IAC uh, Cyberspace Edition. Well, uh, in October last year, the government of Japan decided to take part in the International Space Exploration Program to extend the sustainable presence of human beings beyond LEO to the vicinity of the moon and beyond. Since then, the government of Japan is having discussions with various countries, including the United States. And based on the government of Japan's basic plan for space policy and its implementation schedule that was revised in June this year, JAXA has been coordinating with overseas and domestic agencies to implement specific initiatives. Specifically, uh, in terms of our part participation in the Artemis program, we will utilize Japan's expertise in manned and unmanned space technologies accumulated through experiences with the ISS and other scientific explorations. And uh, we are moving forward with technical considerations for missions such as providing the gateway with habitation functions, contributing to resupply missions and sustainable exp exploration on the lunar surface. For the cargo resupply, we are assuming the use of the heritage of the HTB space vehicle, which retired from its mission to resupply, resupply the ISS with the HTV-9 this year. The HTV was the first to utilize Japan's unique rendezvous docking technology and contributed to the overall stability of the ISS by completing its mission without a single failure for 10 years. The next step to the moon for JAXA is to launch the smart lunar lander called SLIM in 2022 with the goal of acquiring pinpoint landing capability on the lunar surface. Also in cooperation with ISRO, JAXA is continuing its, its investigation into the lunar polar exploration mission LUPEX to be followed by the development of manned pressurized rover, which is expected to continue contribute to full scale lunar exploration. Regarding Mars, we are planning the Martian Moon Exploration Program called MMX, which is scheduled to be launched in 2024. The MMX will inherit the unique sample return technology of the Hayabusa 2 mission. By the way, the Hayabusa 2's sample return capsule is scheduled to return to the Earth on December 6th this year. As for private companies, JAXA is conducting joint research with private sectors not only for the purpose of applying our research results to space exploration, but also for promoting commercialization and innovation on the Earth and in LEO. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hiroshi. I would like to direct the next question to Lisa. Welcome to the Heads of Agency Roundtable. Now that you have been at the Canadian Space Agency for less than one month, we of course all would like to know what will be the focus of your mandate? Merci beaucoup. C'est un plaisir de me joindre à vous. This is a significant time for Canada's space program, and it's very meaningful for me to be part of it. I want space to be a true economic engine for Canada and to contribute to not only building back the economy, but building it back better. 
First and foremost, I'm a public servant like many of you, and my goal is to improve the lives of Canadians. I see the tremendous potential of space. By searching for solutions to the problems of human spaceflight, for example, we're also providing solutions for pressing challenges on Earth, from remote medicine to smart food production. Canada is a vast country with a relatively small population. We rely on information and imagery gathered by space-based systems to observe and monitor our country. Information gathered from space is now intertwined with major Government of Canada initiatives from oceans to agriculture. Our space sector is pushing the boundaries of innovation and creating technological transfers to applications on Earth. I want to work closely with international partners and exchange best practices. Whether exploring the universe or observing our planet, we need to do this together to ensure the benefits come back to Earth to solve challenges for future generations. My other goal is to grow our space sector. Now more than ever, it's important that we as space agencies work to support our space sectors. In return, they'll contribute to our country's economic recoveries. Commercial space activities are on the ascent and driving significant new growth. The economic potential is tremendous. We need to show people the impact that space has on their everyday lives. And in today's global context, we need to show its economic potential. We need smart, targeted investments. We need to build a framework that supports the space sector in the current environment. I've been seeing the advancements in other countries, and I'll be looking closely at what steps we can take in Canada to support the creation of that enabling framework. Overall, my hope is for all of you to see more of what Canada can bring to the table. Thank you. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Lisa. As you could see, I also speak French. And uh, I would like now to give the floor to my friend in India, Dr. Sivan. Uh, Dr. Sivan, uh, how is ISRO getting uh, engaged with partner agencies in advancing space technology? Dear IAF President Dr. Pascal, my dear friend Dr. Legal, and fellow space agency chiefs, I am extremely happy to participate in this cyber edition of IAC. Coming to the question, international cooperation always has been the hallmark of Indian space program, both in terms of learning from others and also helping the others to benefit from the space. So far, India has signed 250 cooperative documents with 59 countries on space cooperation. The cooperative activities under these agreements are a mix of activities. It includes activities for advancing space technology by partnering with the space faring countries and at the same time helping the space aspiring countries to develop their own capabilities in space. I would like to mention a few ongoing collaborative projects just for giving a glimpse of its breadth and depth. We are uh, pursuing a strong cooperation with Russia on human space flight. We have already identified the astronaut candidates for Gaganyan, and they are now undergoing the training in Russia. Internal testing of the crew module and crew escape system and developing countries uh, that the components for life support system are some of the other areas of our cooperation with Russia. Our cooperation with NASA is multifaceted. We are jointly building NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar, NISER, which is a landmark in India-USA partnership. In addition, we have many joint experiments in the science area. ISRO and NASA are also exploring cooperation in human space flight, planet exploration, and Hulu physics. In addition to NASA, ISRO is pursuing cooperation with USGS and NOAA on sharing of satellite data. France has been a strong partner of India in the field of space. After realizing two joint satellites, Megatrophic and Saral, ISRO and Kenes are working for realizing third mission named Trishna. A lot of other areas like the space transportation, human space flight, geodesy and professional exchange are progressing very well. ISRO is partnering with JAXA to build a joint lunar polar exploration mission and working with the DLR on many technology elements like robotic and artificial intelligence. ISRO and ISA are working for using each other's 
deep space network antenna for supporting their missions. ISRO is also working with Israel Space Agency on electric propulsion system. On the other side, India is committed to support space aspiring nations in capacity building. Last year, we offered two months hands-on training on nano-satellite building for 60 officials from 33 countries. The South Asia satellite was dedicated to neighboring countries is another example of sharing space benefits. ISRO will continue to attach highest importance for international cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sivan. The next question goes to my fellow European, Jan. So under your leadership, ESA has had a very successful ministerial conference at the end of 2019. So we, of course, want to know what are the next new endeavors uh, which are actually conducted at ESA. Thank you very much, Pascal. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. All were saying that they are happy to meet today. I must say I'm very sorry because for me it is uh, my very last IAC because I will leave this position next year. Anyhow, as uh, Jim was saying, competition is a driver and cooperation is uh, an enabler. And in this function of enabling, we had our ministerial at the end of last year under three main des destinations. This is not moon, Mars or whatever, but society, economy and environment. And as we got something like 14.5 billion euros subscribed, for our work, it's now time to implement. So we are implementing all our different pillars, as we call them, in exploration. We are looking to um, lower the orbit, ISS, Moon, the gateway was mentioned, and Mars, Mars sample return, and also ExoMars. In, uh, in science, we are having Bepi Colombo on our way together with uh, JAXA to go to Mercury, but we are also already preparing the next big mission. So for instance, gravity wave measurement with LISA. And in the field of um, space safety and security, we are preparing for space debris removal a mission and also using artificial intelligence to avoid future collisions of uh, spacecraft. Um, and we are going to L5 uh, to hopefully work together with uh, NOAA and NASA to have a better view on space weather. The applications, this is of course Earth observation with Copernicus, but also the navigation where we implement Galileo and the question of telecommunication where quantum key, quantum key distribution is uh, one of our focus. And uh, in the field of enabling and support, the new launcher system, the new launcher fam family, Ariane 6 and Vega C, but also future developments of uh, space launch systems is uh, in our uh, daily work. But also we are working on Space Rider, a tiny space shuttle I could call. So first of all, our endeavors is to realize all of this. But there is more in the future because uh, now that we saw what is happening, it's clear that digital, digital transformation, commercialization and uh, also again competition and cooperation is in our uh, DNA for the future. We are looking for the future, but I have to say the future in ESA will be decided my, by my successor. In 2022, there will be the next ministerial and he or she has to propose to the ministers what to do after what uh, was uh, planned so far. So therefore, we are preparing it right now with uh, inspiring missions. Um, our sample return was mentioned. Uh, we are also looking to uh, other aspects in a in uh, digital twins, as we call it, so digital spacecraft, digital twin Earth and digital twin universe, as well as digital twin ESA. So there is a lot of things to be done, much more than you give me time today to speak. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jan, for uh, your vision and uh, your uh, achievements. And the uh, final question of this uh, first round uh, goes to my friend, Mr. Zhang from uh, Beijing. Uh, what is the CNSA attitude toward international space cooperation? Um, this is the simultaneous interpretation. Thank you. Respected Pascal, President Pascal, Ambassador Legal, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to be at this forum and to discuss with our colleagues about the cooperation in space development. So the theme of this Congress is IAF, Connecting All Space People. 
I think this is in line with the philosophy of the China space development. So I very much agree with the President Pascal that if the, if the whole world can actually unite together in the space in Denver, we can actually achieve greater success. So China has actually cooperated with Russia, ESA, France, Italy, Brazil, and other countries and organizations to use the space technology to tackle climate change, major natural disasters, and environmental protection, as well as other global issues. And we have also been cooperating in conducting space scientific research and in order to explore the secrets of the universe. And I also invite my colleagues to think about how to make our world a better place how the space technology can actually contribute to the harmonious world. So the CNSA encourage more business and commercial society to actually participate in the R&D and operation of rockets and satellites and also are willing to open up our infrastructure and technology of, for this uh, international commercial users and will also uh, stick to the multilateralism and we would like to use this platform of IAF to actually develop the cooperation with our peers from the other countries, including US, Russia, and Europe, so that we can work together to actually promote the space technology to benefit our economic and social development, and also to kind of uh, make greater contributions to the realization of uh, sustainable development and also the building of the outer space community with shared destiny for mankind. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, um, Sir Tsang. We have um, approximately 20 minutes left. And uh, we actually try to engage now with Slido and look at um, the questions uh, of the audience. And uh, we, I think one of the uh, most important questions is, and I think everybody really wants to know that, and we would like uh, that you eventually could give us all a brief answer, that is how did space agencies respond uh, to the COVID-19 pandemic, um, use, in particular also using aerospace technologies. So this is uh, something uh, where uh, we would like to, uh, to have your opinion. And um, uh, maybe Jean-Yves will uh, start to, uh, to ask, uh, you know, the heads of uh, space agencies. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Pascal. And so uh, the real issue is uh, what uh, will be done in a very concrete way to uh, go uh, and uh, to uh, fight uh, the COVID-19, because uh, today uh, we have this pandemic. Obviously, we overcame it, because uh, today we have uh, this uh, ISC in the cyberspace, and it works pretty well. But uh, in a more concrete way, uh, I know that uh, everywhere in the world, the space agency continue to work. And uh, perhaps uh, some of my fellow colleagues can give us some uh, explanation of uh, what we are doing. Perhaps, uh, Jim, could you tell us uh, how you succeeded to launch uh, the Mars uh, uh, 2020 mission with uh, the rover Perseverance on the 40th of uh, July, in spite of the panic? It was a tremendous achievement. Uh, next time, it will be uh, 18th of February, with seven minutes of terror when uh, you, the rover will land uh, on Mars. But uh, how did you do? How did you succeed to launch it? Well, thank you, Jean Yves. So I will tell you, I'm so proud of of NASA and our international partners that were that were with us on this on this program for being able to move forward in spite of the pandemic. Make no mistake, it was very challenging. Um, we used all of the personal protective equipment. Uh, we changed shifts so that people could be socially distanced, um, and and of course, um, you know, we 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 did. Uh, we, we, we put a lot of our workforce, we, we kept them home while we focused on what was mission essential so that we could make sure that this very important mission moved forward. Uh, you know, we get this chance to go to Mars once every 26 months, so we didn't want to miss it. Um, but I'm also proud of our human spaceflight program. 
uh, launching uh, astronauts again on, on, a, on a Crew Dragon spacecraft. Um, and of course, we're going to be doing that here early next month as well. So um, I'm very proud of the agency and our international partners who have enabled us to move forward in very challenging times. I will also say that when a lot of our workforce um, was, was told that they needed to stay home, they went to work to do some really amazing things. For example, um, out at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, they, they started building ventilators with very minimal parts um, and none of the supply chain that other ventilators use. And so what did that mean? That means that right now we've got companies across the United States taking that capability and implementing it um, in case there's a need for additional ventilators. On top of that, you know, when we, when we sterilize a spacecraft for, an, uh, for a, a mission, for example, to Mars, like Perseverance, we sterilize that spacecraft by using uh, you know, a fogger. And now we're using that type of fogger to sterilize the inside of ambulances and the inside of hospital rooms and classrooms and, and other areas to make sure that um, wherever you know, there could be contaminants or a virus, uh, we can make sure that, that those contaminants or viruses are killed. Um, so we're using NASA technology day in and day out uh, to advance the human condition, keep our people safe. And of course, I, I also want to say I'm so proud of, of the great work that our agency has done to keep our people safe while moving forward on the very important missions that NASA has in front of it. Uh, thank you so much, um, um, Jim. And I think, you know, every space agency, you know, has a story to tell. And I wanted to, to ask Jan Werner, uh, because ESA is distributed over whole Europe, the European Space Agency. So Jan, how uh, did uh, you manage uh, to run the agency during the pandemic? And did it have any impact on the missions? Yeah, thank you very much, Pascal. Yes, so we started to send all people home at the beginning of March already. So we went to 95% teleworking of our staff. And uh, I have to say it worked really perfectly. They were well prepared because we are doing teleworking normally also in ESA, but not 100% of the time. So this worked very well. So what was also clear that uh, COVID was a challenge and an opportunity at the same time. So as uh, Jim was saying, we could also distribute uh, activities and could show that we can help really. For instance, with telemedicine, we sent over a, a mobile lab to Italy for helping over there because uh, Italy was really strongly impacted, one of the main impacted countries in, in Europe. And we also used our astronauts because astronauts can tell you how to behave in isolation. So they were talking to the general public to explain what to do in order not to be, to get, uh, totally ill uh, in, in uh, total isolation. So this was just a few cases. But as you were asking about our missions, we had a special problem with our spaceport in, in um, French Guyana because uh, the COVID crisis was very strong over there. So we had to delay several of our missions, but we had some delay, delays, some cost increases, but a very small one. Overall, it worked very fine. And as I said, COVID was also an opportunity. So the uh, the digital transformation in ESA was accelerated dramatically by that. And uh, as, even as a DG, it would not be possible to accelerate like that. Because uh, when I ask for more digital transformation in ESA for all the processes some uh, one year ago, people said, no, 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 wait, 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 we, one after the other. We need always paper for all the signatures. Et now suddenly we could accelerate, for instance, the um, way how to go from uh, from a bill to the transfer of money to the industry, um, we could reduce the time by a factor of two. That means we were really, within half the time, we could deliver the money to the different companies, which of course helped them also to overcome the issues of COVID. So concerning our missions, there is uh, some impact, but not major impacts, but the opportunities for me are also very strong and we used it. Thank you, Jan, uh, for uh, your uh, statement on uh, the way uh, ESA overcome the COVID crisis. And thank you to have uh, said a word about uh, French Vienna. You know that uh, we had to face a very, very difficult situation. Unfortunately, uh, people at CNES have been uh, several, uh, several, uh, severely uh, impacted by uh, the pandemic. Uh, one of our staff, unfortunately, passed away. And thank you to have said a word about that. Uh, now, uh, I would like uh, to uh, give the floor to uh, 
Mr. Chang from uh, CNSA. Mr. Chang, uh, you always also uh, went uh, to Mars this summer on the 23rd of uh, July with a very impressive uh, launch of uh, Long March 5. And so, uh, in a very concrete way, how did you overcome the pandemic? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to introduce to you China's uh, space development in the past uh, period. Just now, the moderator asked about how the space technology can tackle uh, the pandemic, the COVID-19. I would like to tell you that Actually, the scientists in space sector has used the mass spectrometer, Raman spectrometer, and laser spectrometer to quickly detect the virus and to actually accelerate the research and development of this COVID-19 disease. We hope that the space technology can be better utilized in the tackle against, in the fight against the COVID-19 disease. And of course, this pandemic has brought a lot of challenges to our work, but we have actually tried to uh, tide over the difficulties. Therefore, we have managed to achieve some success in the launch of the uh, Long March 5. Actually, ever since uh, last year, China has uh, 37 launches of the missions. Especially since this year, we have implemented 25 launches despite the COVID-19 impact. In terms of deep space exploration, in July this year, we launched Tianwen number one Mars prober, and we plan to, uh, to actually enable it to enter into the Mars orbit in February next year. In terms of the Mars probe, our Chang'e number three and number four are conducting the detection in the near and far sides of the, Mar of the lunar, of the moon. And in terms of the global navigation area, our Beidou navigation satellite system have actually realized the global installation deployment in end July this year and has been able to providing the high precision navigation service for the Asia Pacific region. In terms of the manned space flight, the Long March 5B carrier rocket has actually realized its maiden flight, thereby ushering in the new chapter of this third step mission. And in the future, we will accelerate the application of the usage of the China High Resolution Earth Observation System. We co together with Brazil has successfully launched the China Brazil Earth Resource Satellite 04A in December last year. And now it's in sound operation, and this satellite is now providing the resources for China and Brazil to better protect the environmental resources of the two countries. And we have also successfully launched the gravitational wave detection, the Tianqing-1 and Taichi-1. And we have also proved the key technologies of the gravitational wave detection. And we're looking forward to cooperating with more partners from around the world. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sung. Uh, we have um, uh, many questions and we have very little time, but we have heard now from many agencies how they handled the pandemic and we will have a special session this afternoon also, which is actually discussing this topic um, uh, later uh, today this afternoon. I want now to ask uh, uh, Dimitri um, Rogosin, uh, there is also a question which many people are interested in. Is, is there a long-term vision for permanent infrastructure on the moon? At the moment, the moon is seen more or less like a springboard to Mars. 
um, I'm not 100% sure if I agree with the question, but um, uh, uh, we would like to have uh, your opinion. This is a question from the audience. We had a problem with getting the question, so could you repeat the question? Okay, yes. We just reconnect it. Uh, yeah, the question um, is um, from the audience is, is there a long-term vision for permanent infrastructure on the moon? Or is the moon seen just as a springboard to Mars? Actually, exploration of the moon is a very important point. It's, it's important both in its and also important as a, as a platform for further exploration of the solar system. In October next year, we are planning to send our mission to the moon. The purpose of this mission would be to test the technology for lunar land. And further missions will be also focused on testing technologies which will be required for deep space exploration. And talking about the manned part of this project, then, I have to say that the most important thing here is to train us astronauts and cosmonauts for staying in, in the deep space for a long time. Because they will be traveling at distances where the support from the, will not be available. Why our research program on board of the ISS be focused on those research which results are required to ensure deep space exploration and deep space missions. As regards to the Luna, it's an excellent form for further exploration of the universe. And it, it has its own peculiarities. Like, for example, the lunar dust may contaminate the lenses of optical systems which are installed, optical observation systems which are installed there. So in any case, there is a point in having permanent presence on the Moon, both for the purpose of exploring the Moon itself and for exploring other objects in the, in the universe and in the solar system. Dimitri. Uh, now I would like to uh, address to Lisa. And uh, you know that uh, Canada uh, has been a major actor in the fight against climate change, with in particular the RadarSat missions. And how do you see the future for uh, CSA to the fight uh, against climate change? Merci beaucoup pour la question. Our countries are being challenged right now. Our people, our health, our economy. And we believe that science is at the forefront of finding solutions to the current pandemic situation and other problems we have on Earth. We need to apply the science and technology we're advancing for space to Earth, all while contributing to our economy. In fact, space is going to be an integral to the economic recovery, the sustainable economic recovery in Canada and around the world. If you look at the Lunar Gateway, we're investing almost $2 billion to build and operate the next robotic system. This will have a very real impact on the Canadian economy. We estimate it will contribute up to 135 million annually to our GDP and create and maintain some 1,300 high quality jobs for Canadians over a 10 year period. And that doesn't even address the benefits that will emerge in fields like artificial intelligence, robotics and health. Last week, I was at the G20 Space Agency's meeting 
the director of the UN Office of Outer Space Affairs highlighted that over 10% of GDP depends on the use of satellites with indirect benefits contributing additional percentage points. That really resonated with me. So how do we capitalize on that? We need to make space data open and available to creative companies. We need to find ways using technologies like artificial intelligence to better use that data. Many countries have made great advancements in this area, and I want to make Canadian data as open and available as possible too. Space is a catalyst for invention. It challenges us to push the limits of what's possible. It attracts bold, creative and resourceful minds, and the global demand for space has accelerated and is expected to grow faster than at any time in history. It's truly a sector of economic growth for the future. In Canada, space has been recognized as a strategic national asset by our government. We're a reliable partner and we have a global reputation for excellence and ingenuity in science and technology. Canadian companies are developing critical and niche technologies that have proven to be instrumental to international space missions and to all of our work here uh, to combat climate change and its effects on our economy and our world. Our goal is to unlock the full economic potential of Canada's space sector and together with all of you, respond to the realities of the new evolving space landscape and the challenges around climate change. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa. We have actually five minutes left, of course. Uh, we want to uh, uh, still ask Chaksa uh, and Isro. So um, concerning uh, Chaksa, there is another question from the audience here, Hiroshi. What role will sustainability play in returning to the lunar surface? And this is particularly interesting for Chaksa uh, because uh, there are news in the press uh, that you uh, will be the first to build a hydrogen a fuel plant on the moon. Well, uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, well, well, as I said, uh, the currently ongoing uh, international exploration uh, aims at uh, orbiting the, the moon and also at the lunar surface. And as I said, uh, the intention is to expand the humankind's uh, boundary beyond uh, LEO. Uh, to moon, the lunar surface and beyond. And uh, I think the point is sustainability, uh, especially for the Artemis program. And uh, our intention is to uh, maximize our uh, technology and experience to contribute to the program. And at the same time, we have uh, our own uh, lunar surface program, exploration program, such as uh, a SLIM and Lupex and also a uh, pressurized uh, man rover. And uh, well, I think uh, I think the the question is refers to the hydrogen fuel uh, station, and I th I think that's beyond uh, or after uh, the presence of the sustainable presence on the lunar surface. And uh, in order to keep sustainability on the lunar surface, we need something for fuel, and we need something to eat, and we need some something to breathe. Uh, to sustain our lives on the lunar surface. And uh, I think the hydrogen fuel is one of them. And, uh, but, uh, well, well, I understand that uh, the news uh, article uh, says that, but uh, it's, uh, we're, ch we're trying to uh, realize that, but uh, I think it would take some time. Thank you very much. So, uh, Arigato Hiroshi, and now, uh, last but not least, uh, I would Merci. like to address uh, I would like to address to uh, Dr. Sivan. Uh, we heard a lot about uh, your uh, Gaganian mission. Uh, we have a number of questions about uh, human flight. And, uh, could you give us uh, your views about uh, the future of uh, human flight for India? Uh, the, regarding the Gaganyan uh, mission, this uh, space, human spaceflight mission, it's really it's, uh, it has advanced uh, very fast. And uh, one approach we have taken for this particular mission because our uh, the target given to us was uh, very low, very small target. Within a short time, we had to achieve. So uh, what we are doing is that uh, we are trying to take the help of uh, the other uh, spaceflight nations <laughs> for uh, getting the things done. For example, uh, <coughs> sorry, 
Uh, we are making use, uh, we are approaching that uh, our Russian space agencies for astronaut training and some of that uh, the critical technologies and uh, some support. And we are approaching that uh, the France for uh, like a human space program for uh, some kind of uh, training in the medical side and other thing. But similarly, some of the areas we are approaching that uh, USA, NASA also. So with all these things now that uh, we are really going very strong. And uh, initially we targeted to have this launch before uh, October 2000. Uh, uh, that, uh, sorry, August 2022, but uh, as uh, that, uh, it's have a very much that our COVID has some impact on our program. Maybe some small uh, ship may be there in the targeting uh, the mission. Obviously, it is uh, going very strong, and uh, I must thank that all the international space agencies for supporting us to proceed and progress in a in a strong way on this the national uh, trade uh, mission. Thank you very much. Thank you very much um, all for, for taking time to join us in this session. I am now supposed to do a, a one minute wrap up, which will be very, very difficult, uh, but I will try. I think it was uh, specifically interesting to hear from the leaders of the space community. And we have heard about the progress of the NASA Artemis program and how international cooperations will be built on the framework of uh, the International Space Station. We have several times heard competition is a driver, uh, but cooperation is the enabler. And that international cooperation uh, is uh, a very, very important asset in going forward. From Roscosmos, we have heard that uh, Russia is determined to keep cosmonauts in low Earth orbit and that fantastic new experiments and technologies will be tested on the International uh, Space Station uh, in the very near future. Uh, we have heard from, from JAXA that it uh, works uh, uh, in strong international cooperation also with the Artemis mission um, and other nations on manned and unmanned technologies and also technologies for habita habitation and is looking for forward to the launch uh, of the smart uh, lunar lander SLIM in 2021 and of course uh, MMX in 2024 to Phobos. Um, we are really, really happy that uh, we have a, a new head of agency and Lisa with us uh, for, the f uh, for the future. We are very, very happy and want to welcome you. And she has given uh, really a, a, a big um, uh, insight into uh, space as an economic engine for society and how she wants uh, to grow the space sector in Canada and also help in the economic uh, recovery and obviously also uh, in, in, uh, for climate change. Um, ISRO, uh, I think it's very interesting that uh, ISRO will launch the Indian Human Space Flight Program uh, through its Gaian, uh, Gagayan mission. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. And um, of course, there are many other missions in international co cooperation, uh, like, for instance, the NISAR mission, a very, very uh, spectacular mission for Earth observations and a lot of collaborations with Chaxas and others. And uh, what Jan all uh, discussed, I cannot even um, uh, summarize, but uh, Obviously, Earth observation, um, navigation, telecommunication will play a very, very important role in the digital transformation uh, in the future, also with our experience uh, in um, uh, with this COVID pandemic. And there are also very exciting missions, Pepe Colombo, Lisa, and um, uh, and also a space debris uh, removal mission. And the last. Um, of course, uh, CNSA, I think, uh, said a wonderful sentence, which is a beautiful closing argument, that it will actually think that the IF is a very important uh, a platform where it can actually reach out for future corporations in space missions and, of course, has a very exciting program. And I want to end with this. I think um, uh, it was really important to hear all the plans. And I uh, thank you uh, for participating. And uh, I give uh, now uh, over to Shoaif. 
Okay, so thank you, uh, Pascal, uh, to have uh, organized this visit of the world in uh, one minute, and thank you for this uh, outstanding summary. So to all uh, of you, thank you to, uh, for taking the time to join us uh, today for this session. And now please stay uh, connected as we uh, immediately move to the heads of agencies press conference. Thank you.